It's dark and cold and spooky. And there is an army of husks. <laughs> Look at these guys right here. We got a new shuriken beeps. I have addressed the problem with our last one. Thank you for all the comments on the previous video. I appreciate it. Loads of people pointing out to me. Oh, look at that. Loads of little ones. <laughs> oh, oh, don't fly into cactus. Pro tip. Another pro tip for you there, peeps. Don't fly into cactus. I had a, hunt, a bunch of comments in the last video saying that I'd already sort of gone through this problem that I had with the shuriken. And that was the manulin. Because, of course, it does damage to your durability as you do more damage to mobs. So that's why we were running out of ammo. Now we have a shuriken that doesn't do that. So instead of manualin, I decided to go with bone, which does some more damage. And this thing does a serious amount of damage. 12.49. And I was just looking at the other modifiers that we could add to this thing. Aha, here it is. Modifiers. If we go in here a little bit, you will see that there is fiery and necrotic. So these are the other two I'm thinking of adding as well as sharpness. This one will do fire damage, additional fire damage, as well as setting them on fire, and this one can steal their health, so this shuriken can be really, really useful. At the moment, though, I've only got one modifier left, and I'll tell you what, I'm actually getting a little bit bored of doing this. I've been flying around in all sorts of different places and killing mobs with ease, and if there's one thing I've noticed about levelling it up, is do all of that before you add quartz to this thing. A moment ago, this thing was doing half the amount of damage, and basically it means you attack the mobs more frequently because they don't get killed as quick, right? And that helps you level it up. So pro tip for you if you want one of these, if you're playing the mob pack, don't put the quartz on till last of all, you know? Get all those modifiers first. You'll have a much better time. The Tower of Power. It has received an upgrade. Check it out, our solar panels have been updated. I know it's not terribly interesting to look at. There's just more of them here and more expensive blocks around them. This was basically a crafting saga that I had to do, and I did it during a live stream. So we upgraded that. We were previously generating about 6,000 RF per tick, and I think we're now up to 24,000. This thing has just finished charging. It was nighttime, so it was all the way down a moment ago, and I think that means it's fully charged. But it generates about 24,000 RF per tick. We can't quite measure that at the moment. But that has certainly solidified our power source for the future moving forward. That is an insane amount of energy. And we will use all of that energy in the master plan. Today I'm going to be revealing the master plan. And I've got one job to do before we talk about it. And that is change this roof right here. So many very smart comments from all of you about what is wrong with this building. And it's not how it looks, it's, well actually it is how it's looked. It's not a bad building I guess is what I gathered from the feedback. The problem with it is it doesn't fit the climate. In hot countries you generally get buildings with flat roofs and in rainy countries you generally get ones with sloped roofs. So I've built a sloped roof in between two things that kind of fit into this area. Now when I reveal the master plan you'll understand why we will end up building a lot of these buildings. So it's a good idea for us to tear this one down and make sure that we get it right. I'm not going to tear the entire thing apart, but we are going to rip out most of this and then give it a flat roof, which might look a little bit odd, but we'll adapt it. We'll make it work. And as far as that goes, this thing, whatever you think of it, it's ugly. It's horrible. <laughs> Converting this thing is actually quite tricky. I thought that what we'd need is overhang at the top, like this. I actually think that makes it look quite bad. From down below, not terrible. From up here, too big and plain. Yikes. Not so great, right? There we go. That is about ten times better. It really is. We are missing our Midori blocks, though. I need to find a way to work that back in. And I want Midori blocks to be in every build. We haven't got it in this one now. I still haven't found a way to work it into that one. But there is one more thing that I want to do, which is add a chimney. And I had some comments pointing this out as well. Lots of great feedback on the last one, by the way. Um, that we could have put the chimney directly above this. Then it doesn't have to be a proper, proper chimney. But in theory, the heat or the steam or the smoke comes up through here. And then it gets caught and goes out through a chimney. Well, how does that look? A little bit too dark in my opinion. Built it out of basalt, was thinking probably should have done it with seared bricks and then I realised that we've used the wrong type of basalt. This one here, clearly a nicer shade than this. This is too dark. And where I've got this little gap here, I think I'm going to close it in actually because seeing the fire doesn't really do anything. It doesn't make sense, does it? But the smoke particles that come off the top, they look great. So that might get rebuilt. But there you go. Our building has been converted to a flat one and 
I've built another flat building as well. This one over here is modelled off of some images that I found on the internet of adobes. They're basically flat roofed buildings made out of clay and we're building them out of sandstone and I don't feel like I've got the right pictures to work from yet, you know, the right ideas in my mind because this just looks a little bit odd. It's also not symmetrical there. Interesting. Don't know how I made that mistake. But yeah, the stripes that I've added in here don't really work in its favour. And the reason that I did that was to try and break up from the flatness and the squareness of it. But that's kind of what we're going for. And a lot of adobes have these little, like, things just pointing out of the side of them there. So that kind of works. It's got a flat roof. But it's what's inside it that we're most interested in. This also has no Midori. I should have put some Midori in here. Uh, this has a teleportation module to go to another dimension. And this is the master plan right here. What I want to do is populate this area with lots of little buildings and cactus farms and things that sort of make sense, but I want them to take us somewhere else. Now this is going to be for mob farming, and what we're going to do is go to another dimension. My idea is that our base here doesn't actually have all of the farms and the things that we want in it. We're going to put those in other dimensions, which we can load using chunk loading. So if we take a step into this dimension, you'll see that I've made a new one. And it'll take a second to get there. Bam. And here we are. It is a void, right? But that's, that's a good thing. It's also a void with a purple sky and a red sun. So it's a little bit spectacular when you're in here. But the reason that I want a void dimension is because there's nothing to slow down any of the chunks here. This is just... You know, there's nothing going on, which means it's the perfect place to add a farm and to have the least impact on a server that we can. If we head over here, though, it looks like there's a little bit of an error. I believe that is a bone block structure, which the vanilla game would have put in here. And there's another one just over there. Yes, it is. As of right now, I don't have a bone farm, so I will happily take these resources. That's actually kind of useful. Um, and these things would only be loaded when we're here. When we're not here, though, we can use the chunk loading from FTB Utilities to, you know, load up a chunk. Uh, but here's the other cool part. We will put our entire farms inside a single chunk. So it's only ever a single chunk that we load up. So when we come to this place, there'll be all sorts of farms stacked inside one single chunk. So when I first envisioned this idea, I wanted the transition between the two places to be seamless. Now exactly how that would be achieved, I'm not sure. It could either be done with a door or you would walk through a walkway. But the idea is that it would be like you've gone into this building and then when you're inside the chunk, you're still inside the same place. So let's teleport through here. And then we're on the other side and we walk through into the room like that. So the best way to make that feel seamless, I'm not sure at the moment. I really have to brainstorm it a bit more, but that's what I want to aim for. Like, the teleporter would be here, and it's like we've just walked through that little bit on the overworld, and now we're coming out in this new dimension, but it's sort of just like we've gone through a door. That's what I'm aiming for, and if we can do that, it's great. But notice here how all of the blocks are outside of the chunk, and here's my thinking. When we decorate this, we're probably going to keep it simple. We're going to have big walls surrounding whatever's in the middle of this area. They will actually be on the outside of the chunk, because then none of this stuff is loaded when we have our loaded chunk with the farm in the middle. It all seems very clever to me. So let's try to visualize this idea. We have our temple in the middle. We're going to build a village that spreads out around it. And so what we do is we go into each building to teleport to a different dimension. And it will go something along like this. Now what I built here isn't permanent. Just using blocks from our palette again. Which, to be fair, start to feel like they limit me a bit now. So I'm thinking when you go inside to one of these other dimensions, we need to give them a new build palette each time so we can experiment a little bit more. So this is our mob farming world. You can see that by the heads that I've left lying around. And down there, it changes a little bit. You start to see these blocks. So what I want to do is create that seamless feel, right? So we've got the door in front of us, and then we've got these blocks on the side. And now we should teleport... And one thing I haven't considered is, are we going to be facing the same direction? No, we're facing the opposite direction. Well, if we were facing this direction, it would have felt seamless, right? Same blocks on the side, that's in front of you, and then you can go out into this world. And if you're wondering what's going on here, I was just thinking we could have an elevator, and you could use it to get up and down to different floors, and that would just be outside of the actual farming area itself. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense of the idea. I believe what we should now do is move on to building our first farm. 
I've never noticed it before, but netherrack is a really beautiful texture to build with, don't you think? No. <laughs> no, no, we're doing an experiment. We're not going to be building with netherrack. This is just temporary because it's nice and easy to build. Well, actually, it's nice and easy to dismantle. We can build with the building wand, which we've been using. It's breaking it that I was concerned about. You know, we wouldn't want to build it all out of cobblestone because we can instant mine it with our paxel. So anyway, the experiment is to see how fast these are going to spawn. I've forgotten something, haven't I? Sorry, to see how fast these are going to spawn. You see, I'm thinking about the speed, because one of them has an octodeck capacitor, and the other one doesn't. I was just thinking about how in vanilla there's going to be a mob cap, like after a certain amount are in the radius, it's going to stop spawning them. And would that affect what we could build here? So I'd like to do something a little bit different and use conveyor belts. So it's been running for a while, and that's it. Six is the limit. By the way, we're building a gold farm. We desperately need gold. That much should be obvious. And I was just thinking, well, the next logical step is to let them drop out of that range. That's always a very fast way of doing things, but I don't know how fast these conveyor belts are. I've only seen them on Iskow's video, and they looked awesome. I think you can make them go around corners, up and down. And what I would like for one of these guys to do is to just, to just walk on there. Go on, my friend. There we go. That is not very fast. If... It was a little bit faster, we could whiz them out of the area, it would probably be something i go with. Oh, and by the way, we're going to do a double spawner here. That's not just for testing. Um, oh, does it also move me? It does! Look at me, I'm being moved. <laughs> Very cool. So it looks like full damage is the way to go. Well, not so much for the damage, but to drop them out of the area. I do want to brainstorm it though, maybe we could come up with something a little different. So I've had this thing running for a while, just while I think about how we're going to do this. And I've noticed that we can't actually claim the chunk using FDB utils, which is very worrying, of course. I do believe there are other chunk loaders in the pack, but the idea is the only ones you're supposed to be able to use is this right here. So I'll have to speak to Scalder about that, as it may be possible to add a chunk loader into the pack. But otherwise, that could throw a wrench in our plans here. But what we're going to do is use something very similar to what we've got going on over there. It's called Killer Joe, and it's from Ender.io. This is it right here. The recipe, as you can see, has got one of these shiny Franken zombies uh, made from a Z Logic controller. It's not terribly expensive. We basically had pretty much everything we needed to make that. And what this guy does, supposedly, is work like that thing over there. And you can give it a sword and it will attack the uh, pigmen with it. If it uses a tinker's tool, I'm not sure, actually. Let's find out right now. Let's go and grab the tinker's tool that's over here. This place is a little bit choppy, I was about to say. It's because of all of that XP floating about, isn't it? So we need a way to collect all of that again. So can I give this guy this weapon? No, it has to be a sword. Interesting. That sort of means it might not be as good. <laughs> uh, it also needs some nutrient distillant as well, which is a, another little step in getting this thing to work. So it's going to be kind of the same, but sort of different. Like, we're, we're taking a different approach, but killing it with a block that attacks the pigment. And now I need to put that weapon back over there. You've got to love building in a mob pack. It makes your life so much easier, flying around... Placing glass with a wand. Oh, I've made a mistake there, haven't I? This is one of the reasons that I made the Paxel, by the way, is because we've got Silk Touch on it, and it's extremely fast, although... Oh, look, it's still instant mine when we're flying. That's not the same for all blocks. If ever you make a mistake like that, nice and easy to uh, clear it up. This is the design that I've gone for, and this is kind of rushed, to be fair. I've not got too much time left to play today, so I've just thrown together a few blocks that look alright, so nothing spectacular going on at the moment. Um, but we're almost ready to get this thing up and running, although the Killer Joe is going to need a little bit of configuration. Well, this confirms that that is definitely not high enough because nothing else has spawned for a while. I will move this thing up later on. These things get herded into this space pretty quickly, so I'm hoping that the Killer Joe We'll kill them quick enough that it's not going to make a massive difference, but of course that always lowers the efficiency a little. I've got a lot of questions about this block. Uh, the reason that I'm trying it is because I just want to use something different, but we may have already found our way to something better. Aha, that's exactly what I wanted to see. So this thing doesn't require energy, and it doesn't pick up any uh, items. So we've got a 
one of these things, a vacuum chest just over there, and apparently this thing will actually store XP as liquid, which is pretty cool, because I was looking for a way to do that earlier on, since it was how I've played before. So this is the vat right here, and what this thing will need is a vat next to it to create um, the nutrient distillant, and now I've got an error message. So we will need some water to operate this thing. We've got to put the water in the vat, which we do like that. How we're going to automate it, I'm not sure right now. I'm sure there's some sort of block that will suck that up and turn it into liquid. So our liquid is now in there. Let's get a couple more buckets here. And then we need two ingredients. The first set of ingredients can be raw types of food, the heads of mobs, or rotted flesh, which we are actually getting out of this thing. So we would be able to fuel it with the stuff we need to make it run, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other ingredient can be nether wart, uh, brown mushrooms or red mushrooms, sugar or fermented spider eyes. Now we're getting sugar from our farm, the witch farm. We could also make a little sugar cane farm here as well. And supposedly that is everything that we need, but we also need to power this thing. Okay, so it's being powered, which means I believe it is producing the distillant. So let's make sure this is on, well, in out is pretty much what we want. Is there just in only? Insert, let's put this one on extract so we know exactly what it's doing. There we go. And now that stuff should be going into there. There it is, the nutrient is making its way in. Now notice how the icon here is an ender sword. I could have swore, do I have a sword on me? Well, we know it doesn't work with Tinker's stuff. I could have swore it was a gold sword before. I guess we could test that because, oh, we don't actually have a gold sword. We'll have to do it in a second. So we give it an ender sword. And now it should, in theory, start attacking the pigmen, and I'm not seeing anything happen immediately. Kind of looks like the sword is facing the other way, so maybe this has to be placed on the ground differently. Uh, it's on always active. We can see the range. Aha, it's placed the wrong way around. I was under the impression that this thing would also attack the player, so we need to spin that thing around. There we go. It's working. So it needs 1,400 in there to start working. What's good to see is it doesn't need that much for each attack. I think it uses five each time, but it has a minimum required to get going. Yep, and now it's stopped. And it doesn't seem to be doing a lot of damage, but this thing has no enchantments on it. I really feel like this is sort of the same deal as what we were doing before, but nowhere near as good. I mean, we can upgrade it with Vibrant Crystals. Not sure what perks that's going to get. Also, this thing has durability, and it's using it up. I am not really seeing a lot of positives to this. It feels like the way we were doing it before was probably the better way. Yeah, I'm going to think on it, but I really don't think this is worth pursuing. At least we've investigated it and seen what it, it is about. So for now, the farm is almost finished. And if we go down here, you'll see that I've attached some item filters. So we're using this thing again. Best way to do it, really, isn't it? And we've got a little bit of a challenge here, because some items we just want to throw away, which are these golden swords. Now, I know a load of people are going to tell me to try and smelt them down or do this and that with them. If you've been playing the pack, I would love to know how to turn these swords back into ingots. So if you've got a theory on how to do that, leave a comment down below, because then, of course, our trash can would go into some contraption to convert them. Now, the problem with this is, apart from the loud noises to my side, if I open this thing... Uh, you can see that these ones have enchantments on. Now this one right here, it gets everything, and that's because we are ignoring the metadata. When it comes to enchantments, it's not quite the same deal, and it seems like you have to have the specific enchantment. I just ate rotted flesh, didn't I? <laughs> um, so eventually another enchanted sword will make its way in here, and if it isn't, I think, sharpness 2, or knockback 1, it will then stay in this chest. So eventually this thing is going to back up, which is unfortunate. I believe an advanced filter might be able to, I don't know, separate the enchantments as well. So we'll look into that. But currently you can see some items are backing up into this chest. And that's because we need to make some deep storage for it. So that's where the gold goes. And then all the other items just go into our regular storage for now. Since at the moment I don't have any deep storage for them. So I've tried now using an advanced item filter here. I'll tell you what's really irritating. You try to get close to it and you get poisoned by that thing over there. I messed around with this bottom line right here and whatever I seem to do with different swords and different options over here just seemed to void everything. It was like every single item would just go straight to this one and into the trash can. So I've kind of given it up on it for now and I have to be over here 
to chunk load the area to AFK, but I can AFK and that means we can get some gold which allows us to craft lots of things obviously and keep progressing in this game. Um, but this thing will steadily get backed up like that and I've got to manually dispose of them which is a little bit annoying but I'm sure we'll figure out a solution to that eventually. So there it is, the gold has been hooked up to the system. If we go up top we can check and see if it's working. Sometimes there's a little bit of an issue with this. Let's type in gold. And look at that, the ingots aren't there but the nuggets are. That's really bizarre because the nuggets are further away than the ingots. So I don't know why that one wouldn't hook up but that one would. But there you go. And gold has been our sort of bottleneck at the moment. It's been the thing that's holding us back from crafting lots of stuff and progressing. But you've seen the master plan. You've got an idea of what's to come. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, leave a like on the video. As always, thank you for the support. And that's it for me this one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.